Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day today. Today, we're gonna go through a purchase or pass. I did one, I think two months ago, and so there have been a lot of releases since then. As you guys know, I am on a no-buy currently for makeup and skincare, and so technically, I'm going to be passing on all of these, but there are still a lot of things that have launched that are super interesting to me. Yeah, I hope you enjoy. If you're new here, hi, my name is Vivian. I'm a robotics engineer with a love for all things beauty, makeup related. Here on my channel, I'm trying to focus more on conscious consumption and having a really curated collection of things that you really like, things that work well for you, things that bring you happiness when you use them. So if you're interested in that kind of content, stick around and let's hop into it. So the first thing I have here is the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush. They look nice. I like the concept. I do like e.l.f.'s putty blush formula. It is more dry than other cream blushes and cream blush formulas and so when you put it on your cheeks it's more of like a soft matte powdery finish. So I do like that. I know luminous blushes are kind of all the rage right now but this specific one kind of just looks like the putty blush formula with a little bit of like glitter particle in it. And I'm not sure that's really the vibe I'm going for. So for me, I am going to pass on this. I do like the putty blush formula, but it's not my favorite. And I don't think I need these luminous ones in my, for in my collection. Okay, so the next thing here is this collab with Nails Ink and Velveeta, like the cheese. This nail polish is supposed to smell like cheese. It's cheese scented, at least that's what this caption is telling me. I am not a fan of this concept at all. I'm very big into nails and nail care. If you didn't know, I used to work as a nail tech in between high school and college, and so I'm very particular about my nails. I think I would hate it if my nail polish one smelled like cheese two these colors are not the type of colors i typically like for nail polish i'm more of like a either full neutral or pastel type of gal for me this isn't this isn't my vibe but to add on to the fact that it smells like cheese that's just like a hard pass for me this collab is honestly shocking like don't get me wrong i i love velveeta like velveeta mac and cheese i i can dig that but that in a nail polish, not my vibe, not my journey. This yellow, like Velveeta yellow color is not something that I personally would want to wear on my nails. The red in this collection I could probably do, but it being cheese scented, I don't think I could do that. This whole collab is kind of wild to me. Like I'm shocked that this happened, especially because I feel like Velveeta is such a weird brand to do to do this with. I don't know, the whole thing kind of confuses me. When I first saw it, I seriously thought it was like an April Fool's joke. No, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> okay, so next new release is this mini eyeshadow palette from Pat McGrath. It's the this Midnight Voyage palette. I would consider getting this if it was a different color story. I love Pat McGrath's formula, but this is more of like a purple color story and I don't wear purples that often. If she had more of like a, I don't want to say neutrals, but more of maybe like a bronzy palette or more of like a, maybe like a blue or pink palette, I would lean towards that more. But this color story doesn't like scream at me. I'm not super interested in the color story. And to top that off, the packaging does not remind me of Pat McGrath quality. The packaging honestly kind of looks like Claire's makeup, like Florence by Mills kind of vibes, and I would just expect more from Pat McGrath, especially because some of their packaging, or their packaging is usually super nice, super luxurious, and this vibe does not remind me of that at all. So this is, this is also like a pass, but I do love Pat McGrath's formula and I will stay on her formula forever. We are not off to a great start. So next is this new palette from ABH Anastasia Beverly Hills. It is the, I don't know what this palette is called, but it's like this neutral corally palette with like a pop of lilac. The color story is kind of boring. 
in my opinion. I feel like a lot of brands try to do this where they'll have basically a neutrals palette and then have like one pop of color and then it's like the that pop of color kind of makes the whole palette and I feel like that's definitely the vibe with this one. Along with that, I am currently not supporting ABH. There's been some some speculation about who she supports in this war or in this like war with Ukraine and Russia and I I am not about that. I don't want to I don't want to contribute to her to this company if their views don't really align with mine. And so this is also a pass. But honestly, if if we're being really really honest I do like the color story of this but it's just because it's a neutrals palette with the pop of color it's not anything new it's not anything special I actually have not tried any of ABH's like eyeshadow formula I've heard that it's pretty powdery and there's a lot of kick up usually so like I can't I can't attest to the actual formula but because this palette is neutrals I know that I have these colors in other palettes and I know that I don't need it and along with that I don't want it because of political affiliations and so it's just a hard pass for me. I'm I'm just not about it right now. Okay, so here's something that I'm actually pretty excited about. This is the No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick from LYS Beauty. It comes in five shades. This is something that I would definitely buy if I wasn't on a no-buy. The only bronzer stick type formula I have right now is from M Cosmetics. It's the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick in the shade Terra, which is more of like a cool toned shade. And lately, I've really been wanting to try more stick formulas, like more creams and stick formulas. For example, there's the, um, the Merit Highlighter that was released recently i believe in a new shade i really wanted to try that and i really want to try this lys cream bronzer stick um i know victoria beckham beauty is also releasing a cream highlighter in like a stick form so these types of products have really been interesting me lately i did used to have the glossier haloscope highlighter but that one was so sticky in my opinion and I felt like my hair was always sticking to it so it wasn't my favorite formula. But these bronzers from LYS Beauty give me high hopes and the shade range looks like it's actually inclusive. And so maybe when I get off my no buy I definitely consider purchasing this. I think I'm going to put it on my wish list for now or just kind of add it to my, my heart on Sephora. And maybe at the end of the year, if I still feel the same way about it, I will end up purchasing it. Okay, so this is not really like a makeup product, but Dyson, if you can hear someone cutting the grass, I am sorry. I, I can't control it. I'm sorry. But so Dyson released their new and improved Airwrap Styler. I bought the Airwrap in February. Or March and so I'm not gonna buy this new one just because I already have the old one but it looks nice I I do like my air app that I have now I don't think I need the new one I think that maybe eventually I'll try and get the long barrels for the regular Dyson air app but they've been sold out for a very long time but I think it's just interesting that they released the new version like right after I bought the old version like right after it came back in stock and I bought it and then the new one came out so I'm yeah I'm just not really I'm not really interested in this I know that the allure of the new Dyson Airwrap is that you don't have to switch the barrels out to curl your hair in different directions but to me honestly that's not a big deal like when I use my Dyson Airwrap I don't find it that tedious to like switch out the barrels versus in the new Dyson Airwrap you like twist like a knob or something I don't I don't think it's that much different and I don't think that convenience is worth getting the new one so i'm gonna skip on that plus it's like six hundred dollars and i don't i don't have six hundred dollars to spend on this but i do think the new attachments can work on the old base so maybe if that happens maybe i will buy like the new attachments just to see okay so makeup forever released these hd skin face palettes it comes it comes in two colorways it comes in light to medium and medium to dark these look nice honestly i like that it has the blush and contour and the different like foundation shades 
I don't think I need this in my personal life like I typically don't reach for face palettes that often and these blush colors aren't my usual go-to's so I think I can skip this but I can definitely see the appeal of this of having everything in one like kind of like the the salt New York palettes that you can buy that you can like pick your foundation and blush and contour colors so I get the, I get the appeal this is just not my vibe I probably won't pick this up okay so house labs reformulated I believe like rebranded and now they are in Sephora I know that they rebranded to be more colorful but something about this whole brand just doesn't interest me I feel like Halsey's brand about face is is kind of doing this vibe better than Lady Gaga is if that makes sense like I, I know when people think of Lady Gaga, people think of very like artistry, like the crazy looks that Lady Gaga used to do in the early 2000s. And so her rebranding now just kind of seems too little too late in my opinion. And I feel like Halsey's makeup brand is doing that colorful vibes a lot better. Than Lady Gaga is. So the next makeup item I want to talk about is the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer. I'm not interested in this. I'm not gonna lie. I know right now is kind of like the age, or not the age, the season of like bronzers and glowy skin and those vibes, but I don't know. I, I think I have, I think my collection is all set with the Tower 28 Bronzino that I currently have. I don't think I need another bronzer. I think I have a lot already. I did purchase the M Cosmetics Powder Bronzer. I have the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick and Terra. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I just don't think I need another cream bronzer at this point. I get the hype of it. I know Charlotte Tilbury is such like a, a hyped up makeup brand. The imprint of this is very pretty. It reminds me of the the Chanel like swirl, you know, and it's almost as expensive as the Chanel one, I believe. So I don't think I can justify it for myself. I do get the I do get the hype of it. I probably won't pick it up though. It's not gonna go on my wish list anytime soon unless I hear like super super rave reviews are about it. But right now I'm pretty I'm pretty uninterested in it. Okay, so another bronzer launch is from rose ink i don't hate it i'm again i'm not super interested in this right now just because i think i have enough bronzers in my collection they are releasing highlighters too though and the highlighters interest me a little bit more i do love rose ink's cream blush formula it's like more thicker texture than most cream blushes like it's it's not super emollient it feels more like moisturizing than anything so when you use that cream blush it feels like it's like hydrating your skin whereas a lot of other cream blushes are more um more emollient and more like dewy and slip around your face a lot more whereas the the rose ink blush doesn't feel like that so i am interested in the highlighter formula like i said before i'm kind of really big or i'm on the hunt for like a really nice cream highlighter like if you have any recommendations please let me know in the comments down below but i'm not like i'm interested but not interested if that makes sense like it's not something that i'm dying to have right now i don't need to go out and buy this now but maybe in the future i'd still be interested it's like it's like okay i'm not i'm not against it i'm not for it either though new launch from kosis you guys know i love kosis i believe kosis is coming out with new lip liners it's the hotliner hyaluronic acid contouring lip liner they're 19 dollars. it looks like they're retractable pencils which could be nice i don't think i need to spend 20 bucks on a lip liner i have a lot from the drugstore from nyx specifically that are super super nice i know that nyx has like a dupe for the charlotte tilbury pillow talk lip liner i don't think i need it i don't think i would spend 20 dollars on a lip liner when i have when i already have that's totally a lie i bought lip liners from m cosmetics and i don't use them very often so i would spend that money on the lip liner but these just don't 
interest me. I'm probably not going to pick up these lip liners, I don't think. Oh, something new. The Ordinary is coming out with a the multi multi-peptide lash and brow serum. This is actually pretty interesting to me. I'm really bad at remembering to use like a lash serum every day. And so I have I have a cheaper one from Elf, which I don't use every day. I almost never remember to use it. I also don't want to spend the money on a super expensive one either. Like I don't want to spend the money on a Grande Lash Serum when I know that I won't use it very often. But I know The Ordinary is like a relatively good and hyped up inexpensive brand. So this is kind of interesting to me. I still don't think I'll pick it up though just because I know myself and I know that I'm gonna forget to use it. But the concept is nice. I feel like if I could remember to do that, to use it every day, I would pick up the Ordinary Serum. But I know that I won't, and so I can't, I can't justify that to myself. Okay, this is going to be the last one. But Urban Decay came out with these mini naked eyeshadow palettes in the shades Sin, Foxy, and Half Baked, which are, I'm pretty sure, are centered around like some of their most popular shades. So Sin is kind of like this mauve pink tone, Foxy is more of like an olive toned eyeshadow palette, and then Half Baked is like your warm neutrals. And these are all neutrals palettes. These are all not worth it, in my opinion. Like, okay, so Sin looks to me, I mean I didn't compare these directly side by side, but Sin to me looks like a mini Naked 3 palette, which they already have. So I don't think you need this one. Foxy looks like an like a an olivey tone, which not my vibe, so I'm I'm not gonna pick that one up. And then half baked is just some warm neutrals. But I have these shades in every other in almost all my palettes. I think Urban can Urban Decay can do so much better than this. I feel like they were kind of going somewhere with Naked Cyber, which okay. I know that Naked Cyber didn't do that great and didn't get that good of reviews, but I liked the concept of where they were going with that. Like, to go from all of these neutral naked palettes to kind of something more fun and out there and supposed, and it was supposed to be like duo pro me. I feel like they could have made Naked Cyber something revolutionary and I feel like they could have made it so that Urban Decay was more interesting and more appealing to makeup users. Now, that being said, I know that the average makeup consumer is not like me, does not follow all the new makeup releases. I I would I personally would say I'm still a neutrals lover. I I enjoy neutrals and that's mostly what I wear. So I know that the naked like neutrals palettes does well for them. I know that. And that's why they keep going with it. But it's so boring, in my opinion. I know it's not, it's probably not boring to the average makeup consumer that goes into an Ulta or a Sephora and like looks at Urban Decay and is like, wow, this palette is so pretty. I know that I am not their target demographic. But it's, I don't know, I just wish I saw more. Like seriously, I thought Naked Cyber could have been so good. I thought they could have done so much more with that palette plus i'm i'm a robotics engineer like i i loved the packaging of that i loved the circuit board kind of vibes of that and they just went nowhere with it and that makes me sad that breaks my heart not really but i just wish they did more with their new releases and i know that that's not gonna happen but a girl can dream okay a girl can dream. I don't love Urban Decay's eyeshadow formula that much, so I probably wouldn't pick up a new Naked palette anyway. But the hope is there. I think that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys are thinking of these new makeup releases because I feel like I feel like I can't be the only one that's kind of disappointed. And I feel like everything has been done and maybe Maybe part of the reason why I think that is just because I'm I'm personally trying to change my mindset to like not want every new release, but this feels so boring. 
like most of these releases feel so boring to me and I wish that wasn't the case but maybe that's a good thing because maybe it'll stop me from spending more money on makeup. Let me know what you guys think of these products down in the comments below. If you liked this video please like and subscribe if you aren't already. I want to mention that we are not this is not going to be always, but I am in an, a different location right now. This is kind of like the corner of my room with the bookshelf and, um, well, two bookshelves and a projector. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a little projector there. Um, but let me know if this background is okay, if the lighting is okay. I'm, I still only film in natural daylight, but this is farther away from the window so maybe the lighting won't change as much i don't know let me know what you think of this background i hope to see you guys soon thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one